by atrocious mistake. Wait, 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 the army, the army, the army, the army. I only managed to get a few creatures into the cave with hope was now thin. I proceeded through the cave, receiving encumbering losses, and I arrived at my final obstacle. But in my haste, panic, and anxiety, I slipped from my mouth and fell down to the lava. But it was too deep, and I was quickly consumed by the lava's waves. We return to finish what I started. 10 days, 50 days, 100 days, even 200 days. It does not matter how long this task will take, for no matter the cost, I must defeat that polygon-based bastard. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to my final fight against the challenges of the island, where I will endeavor to kill the Overseer. Will I win? Will I lose? Let's find out. Returning from death, I came back to the world on day 194, where my first action was to immediately gather together all my lost equipment, where by the end of the day, I had most of my equipment except tech armor, and all I needed to craft it was polymer, which I went about crafting, and crystal, which I needed to go out, where I ended up finding a karcha, though I ignored it for the moment. After harvesting the crystal, I went straight back home, where at base, I took in everything I had at my disposal and compartmentalized all my tasks ahead to beat the overseer, and the first task was to redefeat all the guardians of the island, and at home, I found that all I needed to fight them, apart from a new army, were the artifacts of the Hunter, Pack, Skylord, Immune, Massive, and the Clever, as I had copies of all the other artifacts. And I would need to collect a vast amount of dino trophies. So after crafting a new set of tech armor, I quickly began working to that end by killing the Karcha that I had found for a Giga Heart. And from there, I went around the snow biome, killing Yudis for their lungs, and when I got bored of that, I went to go and start running the artifact caves, starting with the lava cave, which I flew towards whilst getting tributes on the way there. And arriving there, I ran quickly, flying through the cave on foot where I got the artifact, and then on day 196, I ran the pack cave on my saver to try and avoid damage to my armor. Did not work, by the way. Oh, it hit me. After that, I went to the Hunter Cave, doing much the same, and retrieving the artifact and some Megalania Toxin, where then in day 197, I ran the Chitin Cave, collecting the artifact of the Clever. With four artifacts in my hands and a bunch of trophies, I returned home to store them away for safety, happily checking off the artifacts of the Hunter, Pack, Massive, and the Clever off the list of tributes. I also managed to check off Boa Venom and found that I already had the Spinosails, the Tuso Tentacles, the Fairy Claws, the Gigant Hearts, and the Shark Teeth, so we had shoot through a large part of the tribute list so far. And to continue at this pace, I I went to the Devourer Cave at Carnal Island and hunted for Megalania Toxin, where I ended up collecting six more. And then on day 199, I went to the Skylord Cave and collected that artifact. Next, I wanted to collect the artifact of the Immune, so I dropped by the Green Obelisk for a Megatherium, finding a few extra tributes in the Obelisk Terminal, and also finding that I needed a few more Soro Vertebrae, which I worked at collecting on my way to the Redwoods. And in day 200, should have gotten to this day in the last video, I entered the Swamp Cave, but I found that the tech armor did not work against the Toxic Air, so I had to postpone and go back to base to get the proper proper attire, collecting Thyla Claws on the way. So I'm close to home, I might drop by. Uh, I'm gonna hope there's a Thyla here first though, please. Thyla, even if you jump me, like, it's all good. I want a, one more Thyla before I leave, because that's all I need. Whoa, that works. <laughs> that's a clip, <laughs> it literally happened. <laughs> Five seconds after I said, even if you jump me, and then I- AH MOTHERFUCKER! Though even when I got home, I found that I didn't have enough ghillie gear, and that I didn't have enough organic polymer to craft more. So with that in mind, I would need to go to the snow biome. But before that, I went to go check and see the devourer cave to see if Megalania had spawned in. However, the cave spawns had not reset, so I decided to reset the fort. Then on day 201, I went to the snow biome, collecting the remaining UD lungs I needed and the penguin paste that I need. I got a Glock in my Rory! Then, after collecting the polymer and crafting the ghillie I needed, I went back to the immune cave, where the armor I crafted was still not working against the cave's poison. So to counteract this, I went back to base and went about crafting healing brews. Finding a bunch of leftover narcotics in the cooker, I collected tinto berries with the bronto and quickly began to brew them together. And whilst they were cooking, I did some chores until they finished up in the morning of day 202, where then I went into the cave and ran it. Clearing through the hordes of two FPS bugs, where I finally collected the artifact and left on day 203 and in the afternoon, hoping that the spawn had reset, I went back to the Devourer Cave, finding that they had not, so I went to the Lava Cave to try and look for Megalania, but found none. So I went to the Hunter Cave and finally found a pocket in the cave where I had found a couple of them and collected the last of the toxin that I'd need in Day 204, where I went home and checked off Thyla Claws, Soro Vertebrae, and UD Lungs off the tribute list. Then in the morning, I finally began the rebreeding of the Rex Army, and whilst I did that, I also
also began crafting a ton of gunpowder for ammunition. But even after having crafted a ton of gunpowder and a bunch of ammunition, I'd only hatched four eggs. So while I was waiting for more, I went out trivia hunting. When I got back in day 206, I only found one egg. So I went back out again, where I ended up finding an otter. Wait, hold up. That's an interesting swimming pattern. Is that a... It is an otter. Then on 207, I returned home and yet again only found one egg. Are you mentally fucking disabled? But a female rex that I had left raising had grown up, so I threw it into the breeding rotation. But even with two rexes, the process was excruciatingly slow. So to speed up the process, I made a deal with chat and used a speed cheat in exchange for sacrificing a tech wet. If you have a problem with this, then make sure that you're there when I'm streaming to try and deter me again, or bite me. And after speed collecting a bunch of eggs, I then decided to go and fight the broodmother, which my past self strongly said that it was because I was out of Elm. Back to back to back, but I have decided I need the element more than I need to. Also, uh, yes, me reviewing the stream VOD. Yes, I'm talking to you. Remember to make this the reason in the script. Though, since I've already fought the Brood Mother almost five times now, I'll make this brief. There you go. With Mommy Spider dead, I then went back to the Devourer Cave again to find that the cave spawns had finally reset, so I went about killing the things in there, mainly the Megalania. After that, I spent some more time looking for tributes, where I dropped by the volcano to see what I need to reopen the tech cave. Though, when I looked in the terminal, I found... Blue Obelisk to log off? What? So yeah, for some reason the tech cave didn't consume the tributes, so I had everything I needed for the boss fight. Even so, I still decided to refight the bosses out of honor for content, so I left the heads in there. Though I'm not getting the alpha trophies again, that would be hell. Next, in day 210, the last few days weren't important, I began hatching and raising the rexes. And to not make the same mistake as last video, I'll summarize. First, I started hatching out the rexes. Then, throughout the day, I took care of them and imprinted them, where in day 211, they had all grown up and I had gotten them all saddled up. The next thing was to level them up, which I was going to do while I was out looking around the island. And you may ask, what for? I was out on the look for aloes and rhinos as I had devised a new plan for the tech cave. Last time, the army didn't even get through the door, so this time I would compress my army into a small battalion specialized to get through the cave and fight the overseer. The army in question would include two mate-boosted rhinos, six mate-boosted aloes, four mate-boosted rexes, and twelve fairies from my previous army. And with that in mind, I went out looking and leveling where the process continued into day 213 where I found a female level 120 rhino which I knocked out. However, something ended up damaging it while I was asleep and ruined its taming effectiveness, so I had to let it wait back up. So while I was doing that, I went back out where in day 214, I found another level 120 female rhino which I knocked out and tamed. Which ironically, the other female rhino had woken up just as I tamed that one, so I went and tamed that one as well. And with two rhinos in my possession, I decided to drop the rex reveling for the moment and focus primarily on searching for an ally, but unfortunately, I only found a level 135 male on day 215 when I needed a female for the ally we had tamed last time. Alas, I still tamed it. And on day 216, I went back to Rex leveling, which went all the way into day 219, where I ended up finding a level 90 female aloe, and learning my lesson from the Rexes and the Therys, I decided to just settle with her and breed the levels up when I got home. Thereafter, I went back to leveling, which went into day 220, where I found a level 90 male rhino, and again, learning my lesson, I decided to settle for it. Which again, I went back to Rex leveling, which in and of itself went into day 222, where I finally finished leveling all the Rexes. However, the process would still need to continue, as just as night fell, I began breeding the rhinos and the aloe for prime pairs. And by midday, I had acquired a female aloe with one of the desired stats I was trying to cultivate, and I had gotten a male rhino suitable enough to replace his father. But first, I'd need them to grow up, so whilst they were growing, I got back to crafting gunpowder again. And afterwards, the female aloe ended up growing up, so I began breeding again, where while I was waiting for that, I went around base gathering any junk leftovers from drop runs to grind into materials, gathering materials from that and putting it into the replicator. And with that, I went back to the female aloe, where I collected and hatched the first egg, finding that the child was a perfect replacement female, so I I stopped breeding again and waited for the new female to grow up. And while the female ally was growing up, I ended up getting a female rhino with the sass that I wanted, so all I needed was a reciprocal male for a perfect breeding pair, which came soon after in the morning of day 223. And soon after that, the perfect staff female ally had grown up, so I began breeding them, where the second egg that I hatched ended up being the best possible female ally that I could have gotten from the breeding. So again, I stopped the breeding and waited for the prime breeding pairs to grow up. And while they were growing, I continued to work on gunpowder production, which after a bit of work, I found that the rhinos had finished growing up, so I began breeding for a pair of brass fighting rhinos. And shortly after I checked on the gunpowder, the first baby was born male, and all I now needed was a female. And just as the new baby was born, the prime female aloe finished growing up, so I quickly began breeding out the battalion with them, which did not waste time. By day 225, all the aloes and rhinos had been hatched, born, 
imprinted, and raised to adulthood, where I needed only to level them up. And to not waste as much time this time, I went with a new strategy of collecting explorer notes for the EXP buff, where I would then rapidly level them up. And speaking of leveling them, by the time I had finished the first Rhino, the thing had an astounding damage output of 22,000! Let's see. Oh my god, that is ridiculous! To say the least, this extremely strengthened my confidence as I went into leveling the rest of my creatures, which by day 226, I had finished with the second Rhino, thus I began leveling the Aloes. Now, as you would expect, this was a tedious process, as I went around with each Aloe collecting an Explorer note and then killing everything that breathed, which this went on from days 226, 227, 228, 229, and to day 230 where I finally finished leveling them up. And as a way to decompress from the grind, I decided to go into the water for the first time in this video! Yay! And as a congratulations... Like the video. This is not a request. Anyways, to suffice, I wasn't just in the water to chill out. I had some goals in mind, and all the while I was in the water, I completed them. One which was to kill Alphas for chibi experience, another to kill Basilosaurus for their blubber, and the third to collect undersea drops for fun. Which by day 233, I had finished and left the water, but with a feverish taste to kill Alphas, I went around the map, killing a bunch of them up until day 234. Where then, I finally decided that I had everything prepared to go and fight the bosses, excluding Spider Mommy. And starting with the Megapithecus, I gathered the Rex army and brought them to the Blue Obelisk on day 235. I got in a goof with a cartridge, which kind of wasted my time. I can't really see what the like, with me being inside a corpse, but like I have a feeling the cartridge is in this general direction. Wait, where'd it go? Where is it? I know I could drop it in front of it and it'll eat it, but like I just don't know where it is. It shouldn't be. Oh! Oh! <laughs> there it is! And thus after began the fight against the Mega Monkey. Oh, wait, is it already dead? It's already dead? And from there, I went to go and fight the dragon next, grabbing a few Rexes and the Therese to go fight, and on day 236, I began the challenge against the dragon as well. Okay, okay, thank god. I think- there we go. <sighs> My nerves did not agree with that. Alright, just gonna leave that be. This time, the dragon served to be far more tedious than last, most likely due to mismanaging, and as a result, my army got severely injured, so I had to revise my strategy against the Overseer, which in the end, I just brought four of the healthier theories and made up for the rest with two extra Rexes. Which with that plan, I went to the Volcano, organizing the Legion before the Tech Gate, which by day 237, I had gotten them all organized and entered the cave where I immediately lost four of the Rexes, but luckily those were my only losses. So with most of my army, I began to traverse the cave with extreme caution, taking well over an hour to clear out every single creature, until I finally cleared out the cave and brought my army, minus one hello, to the final chamber of the cave, and then went to the terminal to go and fight the Overseer. This is it, ladies and gents. Almost 250 days of work, and here is my final fight on the island.
It's done! He's dead! It's done! Yo, I missed it too! No way, bro! Oh, I'm gonna crash my game. Look at all those numbers! Alright. Thirty-eight days, but I finally beat the polygon-based bastard. <laughs> <laughs>